If you ask a melee player what they really like about melee, most would say something about melee's great movement, or its combos, or just about the overall speed of the game. But if someone asked me that same question, I would have to mention melee's incredible and diverse defensive suite. Just so we're all on the same page here, I've broken down the mechanics into layers based on their complexity, difficulty, and obscurity. It's basically the same structure as an iceberg video. If you're already familiar with how these mechanics work, Here's a timestamp to skip the mechanic explanations and go straight into discussion. Instead of saying some stuff like, use shield to block attacks to someone who's probably played this game for 20 years, uh, I'll just list a few important things so we can get to this far more interesting stuff that's further down. Uh, some important things to mention are, not all rolls, shields, and spot dodges are created equal. We live in a world of privilege. Light shield actually takes more shield stun and pushback than hard shield and Zelda's air dodge and double jump share the same animation. So... moving on? The second layer I describe as advanced basics. This is using the unique shield mechanics to gain extra advantage from shielding. Next up we have power shield. If a projectile comes into contact with your shield within two frames of your shield input, the projectile is instead reflected back, but with half damage. Our last advanced shield application is the perfect shield. It's basically the same thing as power shield, but against melee attacks. If performed, the attacker will be stuck in hit lag, while you take no shield stun or damage, and are immediately actionable. Notably, you're in stand during this, allowing you to do unique options to punish that you can't normally do out of shield. DI. Immediately after hit lag frames end, the struck player's analog inputs are read and will influence the trajectory of the attack. This influence cannot exceed angles perpendicular to the knockback of the move. Often this is really simplified to survival and combo DI, where survival DI is best used when hit by a powerful move and combo DI is meant to get away as quickly as possible. Using the wrong DI and getting mixed up can often lead to disaster. Layer 3 is on hit basics. By being ready to be hit or preparing for the worst, we can make these hits hurt a lot less. Next up is teching. A player that comes into contact with any sort of floor or platform while in tumble will force him to land on a knockdown. However, if we press a trigger within 20 frames of hitting the surface, we can tech, which allows your character to quickly recover and get on their feet with a bit of invincibility. There are also left and right roll variations of each tech. Next is wall techs, which is basically the same thing as the grounded tech, but it's tumbling into a wall instead of a floor, and instead of having roll variations, we have a wall jump variation, showing that every character does in fact have a unique wall jump animation. Lastly in this category we have crouch cancel. Players actually take reduced knockback and hit lag if they're struck while in crouch. This can actually make a lot of moves negative on hit, allowing for reversal opportunities. Wiggle out of tumble. So you know if you get hit by a strong enough move you'll go into a tumble animation and you'll have to tech if you hit the ground? Well, if we're in that animation and we're not in hit stun, we can actually mash our stick left and right back and forth to wiggle out of this animation and go back to just falling state. Shield dropping. When you shield on a platform, there's a specific stick value that allows you to drop through the platform directly from your shield. This allows for the fastest possible actions from shield, but it does require you to shield on a platform. Next, we have our advanced on hit defense. These techniques in this layer require intense foresight, knowledge of mechanics, and very quick hands. Starting out this layer we have Smash DI. On every frame of hit lag, the struck player's stick inputs are read, and each independent stick input will move a character a small amount in that direction. With skillful use, this can be used to escape certain moves, force a character into a wall for a wall tech, make combos a lot more difficult, as well as numerous other niche uses. Next up we have an extension of SDI called ASDI or Automatic SDI. On the last frame of hit lag, your character will move a really small amount, even smaller than an SDI input, in the direction that's held with the control stick. A C-stick input can also override this input. This is often most useful for being able to ASDI down at low percents for an effect really similar to CC and sometimes even better. Omsatex. We can use all of our different DI to force an impact with either a ground or wall during hit lag and tech this impact to greatly reduce the incoming momentum. Next up is slide off DI. In many situations, with downward DI, SDI, and ASDI all combined, 
It's possible to land with a missed tech with enough momentum to slide off the platform, canceling the hit stun and refreshing our double jump. Lastly is Slate DI. Since DI is an analog value, it can sometimes be more valuable to do a very specific angle of DI instead of just doing our combo or survival DI. This is the most noticeable when we use this to try to make our opponent's chain grabs much harder. I'd like this section to be a bit more lax and just kind of be my general thoughts on these system and what makes them so engrossing. But first I'd like to discuss a couple of icks I have with the system that just kind of hold it back from the greatness that I think it could be. Even though they're really not that big of a deal. Just hold down. This is a common phrase lobbed around by all the CC haters out there. They're just kind of mocking how a lot of the melee hit defense boils down to holding down all the time. And I guess it's got a little bit of merit. Since ASDI down, CC, OMS attacks, and slide off all involve DI down in some way. But DI down isn't always great, and it loses versus a lot of things. So, I don't know, I don't really fall into this camp. Nerfing moves, especially on low tiers. Moves like Zelda's Nair and F-Smash basically don't even work against anyone with a functional knowledge of SDI. And these mechanics generally punish low tiers a lot more than they benefit them. And I don't really think increasing the power gap in melee is necessarily a good thing. Some of these techs are like really, really hard. I'm talking like a third of a second window or even less in most cases. But I think that this is kind of a double-edged sword. Because on one hand, I think that these techs being difficult keeps them somewhat balanced. Because I think if they were really easy, then they'd be abusable and really consistent. And it'd be really frustrating to try to be on offense ever. But I think that them being so difficult that only the top top players are really even using these mechanics is also not a great thing because that means a significant part of your player base that's newer isn't even going to be able to play with these mechanics so i think that there might be some sort of middle ground here but it's hard for me to say that this is just a net negative for the system now for why the system is just amazing first off is risk reward I think it's interesting to have the defensive play be arguably more execution heavy than the offensive play, especially since the defensive play typically happens after losing neutral in some way. This makes the burden on the defender to try to dig themselves out of a bad situation, but not without having good execution and taking some risks. Just saying that there's risk involved is kind of abstract and unclear, so maybe some examples might help. When attempting an OMS attack, you actually forfeit having any sort of good survival DI for the strong hit, and the same is true for most slide-offs. CC is amazing against weak moves, but sometimes they can make a combo hurt even worse if the opponent plays around it. Most of these advanced techniques will leave you in really bad situations in their fail states, but also a lot of times they're the only option that you really have left to try and stay alive which I think puts both players in a really unique situation and leads to really intense moments that are tied to execution and knowledge checks. These mechanics add to an already high skill ceiling. So Melee is known for its amazing skill expression and even its personality expression that you can see in the gameplay. And I think that that extends to these defensive mechanics as well, making Melee a really complex and interesting game to just even think about. If you have any desire to learn or experiment with any of these techniques, I have a great recommendation. Uncle Punch is a training mod resource created to specifically practice many of these mechanics in very specific situations. Along with these presets comes a very feature dense training lab, perfect for setting up the exact situations you might want to lab out. Here's a small montage of great examples of things that are simple to lab out with this mod and can make a huge impact in your games.